This video is an introductory lesson in identifying the host trees of emerald ash borer and thousand cankers disease in Illinois. First we will cover some basics of tree ID that will come in handy when learning to identify the host trees. Trees have different branching habits. The two branching habits we will discuss are alternate and opposite. The nodes of the tree are the points on the branch where new branches originate. On alternately branched trees, each node has only one branch. Oak trees are alternately branched. On oppositely branched trees, each node has two branches. When looking at larger branches of an oppositely branched tree, you will not always find two branches on each node. Branches have often fallen off or been pruned. The predominant types of oppositely branched trees are maples, ash, dogwood, and horse chestnut. A phrase you can use to help you remember this is mad horse. Leaves of trees can either be simple or compound. Simple leaves are composed of one leaf blade. Compound leaves are composed of multiple leaf blades, known as leaflets. Two common leaf arrangements are pinnately compound and palmately compound. Leaflets of pinnately compound leaves run along the leaf stem, which is known as its rachis. Some people say pinnately compound leaves are shaped like feathers. Leaflets of palmately compound leaves all diverge from a single point on the rachis, much like the fingers on the palm of your hand. Emerald ash borer attacks only one type of tree, ash. This includes all species in the genus Fraxinus. In Illinois, ash species include green ash, white ash, black ash, some blue ash, and possibly others. We will cover these distinguishing characteristics of ash trees. Opposite branching, pinnately compound leaves, five to nine leaflets, unique fruit or samaras, and diamond pattern on bark. Ash trees have oppositely arranged branches and leaves. Ash trees have pinnately compound leaves. Depending on the species and the individual tree, ash trees in Illinois typically have five to nine leaflets. Remember, every species has genetic variability. Some trees of the same species may have a different number of leaflets. The fruit of ash trees is a clump of single samaras that hang down, like you see here. The bark of young ash trees is smooth. As the tree ages, a diamond pattern often develops in the bark. Again, there is a great deal of genetic variability in the bark. Here are some examples to familiarize you with ash bark. White ash trees can be identified by their purple or red fall color. For example, take a look at this beautiful specimen. Ash trees can also be identified by their shape with practice. Here are two examples of ash tree form. These two green ash are turning yellow for fall. Hickory trees can sometimes be mistaken for ash. Their leaves are compound and look similar to ash leaves. There is one difference. On a hickory leaf, the end leaflets are usually distinctly larger than those near the base of the leaf. The bark of a hickory tree depends on the species. Shagbark hickories have a very distinct bark. 
The fruit of a hickory tree will probably be the easiest way to distinguish it from an ash. Hickories have nuts with very hard shells. Box elder trees can sometimes be mistaken for ash because like ash, they have opposite branches and compound leaves. Upon closer inspection, the leaf of a box elder tree is different from an ash leaf. It has fewer leaflets, usually three or five. The leaves have coarse teeth on the margins. Some say the three end leaves on a branch of a box elder resemble poison ivy. Box elder twigs have a unique look. They are green or purplish. Some people say they look shiny or waxy. As far as we know, Thousand Caker's disease will only infect black walnut in the state of Illinois. We will cover these distinguishing characteristics of black walnut trees to help you identify them. Alternate branching, 11 to 23 leaflets, terminal leaflet often smaller or absent, large, fleshy fruit, and unique bark. Black walnut trees have alternately arranged branches and leaves. Like ash, Black walnut trees are pinnately compound, but black walnut leaves have many more leaflets. They can have up to 23 leaflets. Often the terminal leaflet of black walnut, or the leaflet at the tip of the leaf, is absent or smaller than the rest of the leaflets. The fruit of a black walnut tree is a nut surrounded by a round, fleshy, green husk. As you become more familiar with walnut trees, you will be able to identify them by their bark. A mature walnut tree will have dark brown or gray bark with ridges that interlace to form a diamond pattern. As you can see here, when you scrape off the outer bark, the inner bark of black walnut is a deep, chocolatey brown. Walnut trees are more coarsely branched than ash trees. A walnut crown is more open, and you will not see as many small twigs and branches when you examine its overall form. Butternut trees look very similar to black walnut trees but are not often found anymore due to the disease butternut canker. Often the terminal leaflet of black walnut or the leaflet at the tip of the leaf is absent or smaller. Butternut's terminal leaflets will be similar in size to the other leaflets. You can see that butternut fruit is similar to black walnut fruit, but is shaped more like a football and is not quite as round. Pecan trees also look very similar to black walnut trees, but there are many features that make them easy to tell apart. The bark of a pecan tree tends to be scaly and lighter in color than walnut bark. Black walnut trees have small, grayish buds. Pecan trees have distinct, long, pointy, brown buds. The leaflets of pecan trees look a bit different from black walnut leaflets. The midrib or vein that goes down the middle of the leaflet is much more curved on a pecan. You can see that the pecan fruit has a unique oval or oblong shape. Remember, whenever you are trying to determine the species of the tree, look for evidence on the ground. From far away, the tree of heaven can sometimes be mistaken for black walnut. The leaves are a similar shape. The bark of the tree of heaven can be gray, tan, or reddish.
The rachis is sometimes red. A very distinct characteristic of the Tree of Heaven is the swollen base of each petiole, which leaves a large leaf scar on the stem or branch. 